But I did see Kingston and Ishii. What do you think was the point where they turned the fans live in Chicago against them? The entire show or you think <laughs> about the specific match? Where did it start? I think I think there were a lot of matches on this show that shouldn't have been on this show. Remember a lot of early AEW shows? We weren't into everyone, but it was like the fans in the room were into every match. Right. Now they're into some people. They're into some matches and a few of the people. And otherwise, it's now been several shows and it's not just Chicago. The fans are sitting on their hands a lot, it seems. Well, I termed it this way. I've never seen a crowd more determined to like a show, and I've never seen a group of wrestlers more determined to change their mind. It took some work. I think Patient Zero was this match with Kingston because there was no reason for this ludicrous bullshit that they do every time to go on so long. It was, what was it, 20 minutes? It had to be. Now, I did hear it was popular in the room, but again, this was a pre-show match before any of the pay-per-view matches. Well, yeah, but, uh, and I know, uh, yes, they, they like that, where they, and I, poor Stace, she actually had to endure most of this program. It's the first time she's ever actually watched AEW because I had the thing on, I wasn't pausing, et cetera, et cetera. And I told her at the start, I said, they're going to start hitting each other on purpose. Then they'll kick each other on purpose. Then they'll suplex each other. Then they'll hit each other on purpose again. And then sooner or later, they'll do the finish. And that's what they did. We, it, and this was, by the way, the, um, the original creative involving Kingston and Sammy was there them to have a match against each other. But you will recall that a couple of weeks ago, Sammy on a TV promo called Kingston a fat piece of shit. Kingston got mad about it, went and pie-faced Sammy in the back. Tony suspended Kingston for two weeks and unbooked the match. So wrestling promoters in years gone by, if two guys got in a fight for real and the fans heard about it, the promoter would book that match on purpose so the people would think that they were going to get into a real fight but Tony Khan unbooked the match that was already booked because he was afraid they'd get into a real fight. So instead, they broke Ruby Soho's nose and Kingston and Ishii started the downward trend of this show. Just the endless, that Japanese strong style bullshit where they stand there and hit each other as hard as they can and don't sell it and allow each other to do it. And it's not only stupid because it's phony and at the same time hurts, but it's, it, it, they, they stand around, then they'll chop, then they'll stand around, then they'll suplex, then they'll stand around, then they'll chop. It doesn't end. There's no action. And at one point, the Japanese baked potato with arms and legs just quit selling it anyway because he was over it. And the people were too by that point. And then they went to slapping each other a hundred times a piece, just like old wash women. Looks like shit and hurts, like, phony as shit. Like old wash women, really. Old wash women having a slap fight. You don't see that too often. No, but it's 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 I'll tell you what, it's an ugly sight. Um this was one of the worst matches I've ever seen because of not only how bad it was, but how long it went. And then after they traded some slaps and headbutts, Kingston just grabbed him and suplexed him. One, two, three. Fuck. And then after that display, which they like Kingston. I don't know if they gave a shit about easy or not, but they're playing Kingston's music and he tries to get him to cut his music and he's pointing at his opponent, trying to get him to chant for him. But they won't cut the music because they don't know what he's fucking doing. He's calling an audible. And Tomohiro is not paying any attention to him. So finally, when they do cut the music, Kingston goes over to try to raise the guy's hand or whatever. And the guy shoves him away. He's like, get away from me. Like he's going to attack him again. It was just, what the fuck? Just blew him off. And that was the end of Zero Hour. I... It, 
Kingston had a chance, uh, and I'll just say this, and I will let you take it away. That Players' Tribune article or Players' Club or whatever it was, or Men's Club, Hair Club, if he got the shit kicked out of him through most of the match, wouldn't quit, and always made a fired-up comeback and won by the skin of his teeth and did that every week for two or three months, you would have had a wonderful fucking baby face of every man of the people. And if you told him the last thing we want you to do, Eddie, is this fucking stupid Japanese strong style bullshit that you're so fucking wrapped up in because it's ignorant and it won't get you over. It will make you look like a fucking goof. So we will line you up a series of people that you can beat by the skin of your teeth after they give you a hellacious fucking whipping in a working way and you will still triumph against that adversity and goddamn people would have responded to that but that now he's just he's just the fat guy that don't look very good and has these shitty matches that are always the same and that's a shame go ahead well again what happened to Eddie Kingston he got pulled into a feud of Chris Jericho Nobody comes out of working with Chris Jericho for the better. We've seen it happen time and time again, and now Daniel, Daniel Bryan. Bryan Danielson's the latest victim. It happens <sighs> to everyone, and it derailed everything that was happening with Eddie Kingston. I know he also got injured. I think Jelly Nutella, uh, I forget what exactly the injury was, but Eddie, maybe it was his eye, but Eddie Kingston got hurt. Well, but you know Eddie's doing these matches on purpose, and Eddie loves working with these Japanese guys that ain't gonna fucking make a difference in how people see him they, to beat these guys they don't care it's the same audience they're preaching to the choir the only people that know who tomohiro ishii is are already watching that program that's why they need some new fans and nobody gives a shit about these miscellaneous interchangeable old decrepit funny looking visually Japanese superstars they keep bringing in. And Eddie needs to be saved from himself because these matches are fucking rotten. Yeah, but it may be the only thing he's enjoying right there at the time because, again, look <sighs> at the way he's been booked. He's been booked like shit, and he hasn't been able to do anything about it. Just, it is he allowed to enjoy himself at all of our fucking... Nah, I get it. Expense. All right, let's talk about the pay-per-view. Yeah, you asked if <laughs> you asked if that was responsible for the crowd issues. I don't think it was that, but the finish of the opening match may have played a part in it. Well, it was a it was a, a steady crescendo of things happening over and over. Let's get to the the opening of the thing, and they split Tony Schiavone up and Jim Ross up half and half, I guess. Well, maybe JR got a little bit more than half at the end because it was so fucking long. But, you know, at least that does keep JR a little fresher and also at the same time a little less crowded in the booth. But nevertheless, you still got Sockface out there. 